Hey, gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and I'm here with a really quick just how to solo tutorial for D-Day Dice. This is a fun, simple, grueling uh, World War II dice checker where you are trying to get your men up the beach and into the bunker without losing everybody in the entire unit. So I'm going to walk y'all through setup. I'm trying to keep things fairly compact so that you can just see it all here on one screen. I might move some of these cards off after I explain what everything is. But DD Dice is a solo or cooperative game. We'll be playing solo and we are playing as the United States. You have a few other country options in the box. But for the states, things that come with your country include this little resource counter, which we'll be using extensively throughout the game, this reference card, which walks you through turns and tells you what various bonuses are available. It's actually a super, super helpful player aid. You have this die that marks our location on the beach. It's going to be telling us when we need to advance and how long we've been in a certain location. And the goal is to advance it up this beach and in the turn in the bunker where we survive combat here. So if I can make it all the way up this beach, make it through the combat phase in this bunker right here, then we win, otherwise we died, which happens a lot. The other thing that's unique to your country is every country has its own specialist deck. So these cards right here that are just sort of plainer looking, they have no background behind the stars, are your regular specialists. So you're gonna have a deck of regular specialists for the United States. And you're also going to have these reserve specialists. You'll note that they have a black background behind the star cost on the card. And they'll also say reserve specialist on the back. This matters because you can have as many regular specialists as you want, but you can only have one reserve specialist at a time. So you have to watch it to limit yourself on these. There's also a more general card pool. Since we we're talking about specialists, let's go ahead and start with this deck. So you have ranking specialists, which Again, you can sort of hire in any amount, and then you also have unique specialists. There can only be one out at a time. And these are guys who are gonna help you modify your roles, make your game a little easier. So we'll be looking at specialists a lot in this little tutorial. So just like with your country's specialists that are unique to you, um, these will have gold stars instead, but no background means it's a ranking specialist and you can hire a whole bunch of them. A uh, black background means that is a unique specialist and he must be unique. Only one of these out at a time. Other cards that are gonna go out during setup are the award deck. So basically if you have an excess of courage, you can get some awards that give you some in-game bonuses. And then we also have items. So not all these items are gonna stay out. I'm actually gonna talk about items really quick to make your setup as easy and efficient as possible. So you need to check the rule book and under the game start section for exactly what items you're allowed to have access to for a given game. Um, it depends on how many players there are. But for a one player game, basically what's gonna happen is that you're gonna get to have all of the regular items available to you. So this little deck is just gonna go out, except there are some regular item cards that you need to remove. So these are our plain regular items and they're good to go. But I have a separate stack of regular items that are used in multiplayer, but not in solo. And you can identify them by this really subtle little bullet casings symbol over here. So be really careful about not letting these mix in with your solo game because they're not really supposed to be there. Meanwhile, the regular items that are for your regular use do not have it. So you can see the difference. We are gonna hold these removed regular items out for just a moment. We also have special items. And so the special items that you have access to for your game of D-Day Dice are dependent on the map you chose. So for this one, we are doing number one, Exercise Tiger. And there are special items that are specific to Exercise Tiger that we can look at and put into our available items pool. So to find out about that, you go to the D-Day Dice Scenario Book. There's lots of handy symbol guides in here, by the way, which I recommend having for your first couple games. And then here we are with map number one, Exercise Tiger. So there are actually a couple ways to play Exercise Tiger because this is your sort of tutorial scenario. So you can do a practice run with reduced rules, basic training that adds a little bit more in, and then you can do advanced training, which is treating it like a normal game, which I'll do because I forget to remove rules at this point. But also what you see here is available special items for this battle map. So you can't just go crazy on all the special items. The scenario that you're playing is gonna tell you which ones you can have. So in this case, we are gonna pull the amphetamines, the bazooka, the flak vest, and the lucky charm and have a look at those. So these are special items that were not included in that list. They're gonna go off to the side. And then I have pulled the ones specified to look at. 
So now that I've done that little bit of sorting and kind of shown you what to look for, basically for one player game start, the instructions are add all regular items that don't have that bullet symbol plus one card of your choice. You can either pick one special item from the battle map list or any one regular item that has the bullet symbol. So all of these cards that we pulled, the bullet symbol cards and these special items, we get to pick one of them to make available in our game. So you might wanna spend some time kind of shopping through, experimenting with what different item combos you want. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'll just pick one and go. So I'm actually just gonna grab the bazooka, which I really like, because it allows you to subtract seven from defense of your sector or bunker, which means that when you go into an area that kills a lot of people, you lose a lot fewer of them, which could help us win this game. So I'm gonna put that one in our item stack. So all these unused items will go off to the side. As you can see, we've got our map out. We're gonna set our chevron to one because it's our first turn in sector one. We're gonna give ourselves the starting resources here on this sector. So I start with four soldiers. And I need, for me, every player would need this, a set of six dice, two blue, two red, two white. And that means that we are all set up and we are ready to play some D-Day dice. All right, so let's go ahead and walk through a turn sequence. We're just gonna play along until I either feel like I've taught you enough, get distracted and play through the whole scenario, which could happen, or die. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes. So we've got these six dice and we are gonna start by rolling those. But before I get to it, let's go on a quick tour of the die faces just so you know what you're getting into. Each die in D-Day dice has the same six faces so you have, a, you have a face with one soldier on it, you get one soldier for that result. There's a star, if you accumulate these, this is what allows you to buy those specialists that we were piling up over when we were arranging the card decks. A two soldier result gets you two soldiers. A medal gives you courage. You can use this to purchase awards, but it's also crucial to advance from one part of the beach to the next on the map. You can get sort of item points, which allow you to purchase items that are very useful. And then you have a skull. This is the bad result um, most of the time. Basically, you have to use it to cancel out another die of your choice, unless you have a specialist that lets you ignore that. And again, we're gonna be using these dice to accumulate resources and then move up the map. So when I say that you need courage, I literally mean we're spending metals one, two, two, and then three, and then four to go into the bunker to advance up the map. And there are gonna be other little special map symbols that we encounter as well. But for now, we've got our four starting soldiers that were denoted here at the bottom of the map, your little starting resources, and let's roll and see what we get next. So on a roll turn, you get to roll through the dice three times, up to three, but there are a couple of restrictions. So here are our first die results. And this is actually not a terrible first roll. I would have liked more soldiers. I'm not happy with this, but um, we're actually in an okay position because basically when you roll, you get to roll up to three times and you have to lock two dice. You have to. So I'm gonna to choose to lock these two, but I'm actually also going to take this third one out of the pool because as you've noticed, maybe, I now have a red tool, a white tool, and a blue one. And what these do is it gives me a red, white, and blue dice bonus. You can also get a bonus for a straight, which is having one of every symbol, but that is more rare. So getting an RWB bonus is good, especially now early in the game when I can use some of this stuff. So we're gonna hold on to this. But now I can roll these other dice in any combination I want up to two more times. All right, so I definitely like these results because you always need more soldiers. So I'm actually gonna keep these two and I'm gonna roll this one more time. All right, so I got another two. Maybe I should have gone for a second RWB that is allowed. So I rolled my dice, I've done my three rolls. And now that means that we move into the upkeep phase. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to count our RWB bonuses, of which I do have one. I've got one that is a special find. So every country you play has slightly different RWB bonuses, and they're on this reference card. So every country you play has different RWB bonuses, and they're on the reference card. So here's the United States one. So as you can see, there are different awards for three skulls, three stars, three single soldiers, three doubles, a battle cry for three medals, or what do we have here for the three wrenches, which is a special find. So it says I can find a used item by paying its cost in item points. So basically once you've used an item, you can't get it back for, the, for that game, but I haven't used any items. However, I can gain 
for soldiers. And that is what I'm going to be doing with this particular RWB bonus. So I'll be getting my four soldiers right here on this little card. So we'll go up to eight. We are now at eight soldiers. And I don't have any other resources yet, but this is where you track metals. These are item points for tools and then stars. So once you've done your RWB bonus, you're also going to count just what's on the die faces. So in this case, I have three different item points results. So item points are a little bit special. Um, when you get a bunch of item results, it basically just rewards you and rewards you and rewards you. So I had three die faces with the item tool on it. So I'm going to get six item points. So we'll adjust that here. And then I just count the number of soldiers on these die faces. So one, two, three, four, five. I get five more soldiers, which brings my total up to 13. That's actually really good because your soldiers are your most valuable resource in this game. If you run out of guys, then you will lose. Basically, I've told you how to win this game, which is to get up into the bunker and survive an attack there. However, by survive, I mean have guys left over. So your soldiers are the count of dudes on your resource card and then also specialists that you have, they count as soldiers and can be lost in the same way. So basically you will lose the game if you run out of dudes or if you um, need to move and can't, which we'll talk about. Now we're gonna do what's called adjust unit markers. So this is our unit marker. And basically this is a way of tracking whether you have to move on a specific turn. So as you can see, this minus two soldiers for here, that's a pretty low um, combat penalty every turn. So I'm going to want to sit here for a while and accumulate resources. However, D-Day Dice has made it so I cannot sit here forever. I have to move. So I'm going to move my chevrons up to two. Basically what will happen is that we can go to three and then there is four. I have to move. So once we're on the red arrow, I know I'm moving that given turn flat out. But right now we're on chevron two. The other faces are for just different things. So this one, if I'm using battle cry to move, I might mark it with this die face. And then this one is just a visual reminder. If you are in an area with a black background instead of the white one, uh, that basically means you can't hang out there for another turn. You have to move. So this is a visual reminder of that so you don't mess up. Right now I'm sitting going into my second turn here with two chevrons showing. Once you've adjusted your unit markers, you move to phase four, which is rally a specialist or find an item or draw an award. So I have six item points. Maybe we can have a quick tour through the items. I don't have any stars yet, so no specialists are going to be happening just yet. I don't know. I don't think there are any items that I want for six points. I might need to save up some more points. As you can see, something delicious like the flamethrower is a whopping 20 points, and I might want to be saving my item points for a badass item instead of getting something dinky, depending. Although I can get a walkie-talkie for five. I don't want that yet. It's just get two soldiers. But there may come a time when that's what I want. So, you know, whistle advance once without spending courage. A Bangalore torpedo. Binoculars are kind of cool because they let you change a die result. So you can kind of give yourself a combo. Field radio, get some more dudes. Mine detector, ignore landmines this turn. That's always convenient. And the bazooka, which I had picked as a possible earlier in the game. So I don't want to buy any of these, but we have them and they're cool. And then there's phase five, which if I were moving, this is when I would actually move. So just talking about that, this is the easy level. This is the introductory one. So sometimes when you move in this situation, you get stuff. So here, this is plus one star, plus one courage. This game, you know, you get a specialist, see that green border. So this game helps you get stuff in the early stages and then later it just punches you in the face. But then moving up, this is a requirement for a specialist to move into this area. So if I wanted to move here, I would need to uh, have this specialist with this symbol. And then there's some other sort of special effects that happen as we go up. So this is machine gun fire, this affects your die rolls, etc. So as you learn the game, you're gonna wanna learn every map and kind of think through where you wanna go, what you wanna do, and what rewards and consequences there are for moving to certain spaces. Also, these are landmines, so, you know, they're not going to make it easy on you. But for now, we're staying put, so let's move into phase six. Phase six is combat. So now we're going to lose soldiers from our unit according to our sector. So in this case, we're just losing two. Um, as you can see, by the time you get to the bunker, you lose 20 when you enter there and, and do combat. And those numbers change as we go up. Um, the machine gun adds some variability to that. 
So here, if I'm here, I would lose three guys guaranteed and then more depending on what I rolled on this lovely little machine gun die. So things get more brutal as you move up the beach. You're gonna wanna hang out here up until it makes you move probably. The other fun thing about movement is that you can move laterally, but you cannot move back to a place you've been before and you can't move down a level. You must continue up that beach. So I could move here to here, but I can never come back to this spot once I've left it. And I couldn't do something like go here and then here and then here. Like that's a no, you have to forward advance soldiers. All right, so we've walked through all the phases. Not everything happened this time, but that's normal. We are gonna do another phase one, we're gonna roll. All right, so this is looking really clean and nice. Let's keep these two and hope that I get another white die result that has two soldiers on it, because that would be ideal. So we'll roll these remaining four. Okay, um, this is just kind of nice, so I'll keep it. I definitely want to re-roll both the white ones. I'll take a star and start working on getting specialists. Oh no, okay, so I'm gonna count that as a rolled die even though it totally escaped and that was rude. So this is a skull, we're gonna have to deal with it, but I'm not matching it with this die. So I do have my soldier RWB, and then I'm gonna have to use this skull to cancel out one of these other two dice and I pick. So I'm gonna choose to take, ooh, that's a tough question actually. I'm gonna actually take the star this time because I do want to open myself up to getting some specialists and I'm gonna let the skull cancel out these dudes just because I know I'm gonna get a whole bunch of dudes in upkeep, which is this next round. So yes, the skull canceled this result. We won't tabulate it in, um, in our rewards and upkeep phase. So now I do have an RWB though. As you can see, the reward for getting soldiers is more soldiers. So I get fresh troops gain five soldiers. So we're gonna gain another five. Oh, I forgot to knock those guys down during combat last time, that was stupid. All right, so I was at 11. And now I'm gonna add five, so that puts me at 16. So that's not bad. Then I actually get to take my normal die face rewards. So that's six more soldiers. So that puts me at 22. And then I did get a star. So I will get one star over here, which will hopefully start moving me towards specialist purchase territory. And I had six items. This one's a little, this dial's a little bit loose. All right, so that's all my dice. Now we're gonna do phase three. That's the adjust unit marker. All right, so it's gonna get desperate soon. I have another couple safe turns here to do stuff, but I need some courage to move and I'd really like a specialist, so I need to like book it out of here. But we're gonna stay here an, a little bit longer, so I don't have to move this turn, I will have to move the next. Here's Rally a Specialist, but I don't have enough stars for a specialist right now. I think the cheapest one is actually two. So I can't get a specialist yet, but hopefully soon. Move, I'm not moving, I will next turn. And then we get phase six combat. So that means that uh, I'm gonna lose two of my dudes and we're gonna go back down to 20. All right, so not too bad. We'll go back to phase one and roll again. Okay, let's see what I can work with here. I don't like these skulls very much. I'm not into trying for a straight right now or anything like that. Okay, I have to lock two of these. I'm gonna go ahead and lock the metal because I do need this to move up. So I'm just gonna hold on to it. And I'll take, let's take one red soldier and kind of see what the next two rolls give us. Okay. So I'm gonna take this one and this one and see if we can kind of pull an RWB or something else out of this last roll. Oh, skull, <laughs> that sucked. Okay, well, so we did get an RWB, but this skull is gonna force me to just cancel out one of my medals. So I only get one medal, that sucks, but it could be so much worse. Okay, so now we're in upkeep, let's take some rewards. So I've got these three soldiers. What is my bonus for that? All right, this is actually a really helpful one to talk about. So we have reinforcements. It says adds four soldiers to your unit and four soldiers to another unit of your choice. However, because we're playing solo, I am the other unit of my choice. So we just picked up eight soldiers off of that RWB, which is fantastic. They are your most important resource in the game. So we're at 28 soldiers right now, and then we get three more. So we're at 31. 
So I'm having good luck with soldiers and not as much with everything else right now, but that's fine because these guys are really the most important resource you can get. And then I'm going to get one metal, which is good because I need that to move in the next turn. So we've done upkeep. Now I'm going to adjust my unit marker. All right, so this red arrow means that we must move this turn in this move phase. In phase five, we are moving. So we're going to have to pick which one we want to go to. This is actually kind of nice because we get some rewards for it because it's the easy level. Yes. All right. So uh, we just did the unit marker. Rally a specialist, find an item, draw an award. We're not doing any of that. Phase five, move. So we've spent our three turns in this, spec this sector. We now must move. So the question is, which of these do we want to move to? So let's just kind of think about it. All right, so just so you know, the symbols do advise us here about this particular level. If I go here, I'm gonna get a free scout specialist, which is kind of cool. This, uh, in this particular scenario, the scout also cannot be rallied otherwise, so we might go here. And then the same thing for this particular level, this is the only way to get a sharpshooter. So we have to decide, do we wanna get a scout or a sharpshooter? And then there's a couple little bonuses right here as well. So let's pull out the specialist and have a look at what they are. All right, so we've got our scout and our sharpshooter. Let us compare. All right, so this one allows you to basically add a free item point to your final tally every single turn. Um, it doesn't have a color, it won't help with your RWB, but it's just like a free point. This one lets you ignore one skull in your final tally, which would have been nice a couple times already. So, ugh. The other thing that's kind of cool is that, see how you have this plus star and plus metal here? Basically what this means is that each turn you spend in one of these locations, um, you will also get to add a colorless point of this item to your tally. So basically I will get a free star every turn while I'm here or a free metal, depending on where I choose to move. I'm gonna want to go here to our friend, the sharpshooter and get free stars. So I think that's what I wanna do. So I'm gonna come here in my move phase. So this is a unit moving here, gains a sharpshooter. So now I have a sharpshooter specialist who will let me ignore skull. So I put the sharpshooter there and then I'll get this each turn I spend here. The scout is no longer gonna be available in this game. So I'll just put them up here because I chose not to go to the spot that would have given them to me for free. Now I have to resolve combat. And as you can see, I'm gonna resolve it a little more nastily here. I've had to move into a place where I'm gonna lose four soldiers. So it's gonna take me down to 27. All right, so let's roll our dice. Thinking ahead, we have a couple of options on future turns. We can decide to move across landmines and come over here. I mean, we could get the scout still if we wanted to, but uh, we might want to just keep moving forward. Um, if I can get a corporal, we can go here because he's a requirement for this space. And it's a little bit less scary. Here, we would lose six guys guaranteed in either of these spaces and then have to keep moving for the next turn. So I think our best bet is to maybe try to get a corporal and maybe a minesweeper to get us to these landmines. All right, so let's see what we're working with here. Okay, so I could try for a skull RWB, but I'm just not that crazy. So we're gonna lock these two and reroll the rest. Okay, I'll take the courage metal. I'll take these two guys. I get one more roll, please no more skulls, good Lord. Of course, I got another skull, but I can actually ignore it this time because the sharpshooter lets me ignore one skull in my final tally. So I didn't get the RWB I was hoping for. Darn it. But I did get these two medals, so my courage will go up. Also, I spent one, by the way. I spent a courage here to move up. I'm horrible about remembering to do things at the right time, but yes, I had the courage, I spent it. So I'm at zero medals right now. And then I go up to two from these die rolls. And then I have one, two, three, four soldiers to add to my tally. So we're back up to 31 and then we're just gonna lose it again right away. All right, so I did my upkeep. Let's put all these dice back over here. So I've done my dice upkeep. I can also do my map upkeep. So I'm gonna get another star right here, which is great because I wanted to get a specialist. And I can now afford a basic specialist because I have two stars. Yes. All right, so I have to adjust my unit marker. So this is counting the number of turns I got left here. Then I can do rally a specialist, find an item or draw an award. So I wanna rally a specialist. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the corporal. I want the corporal in part for movement benefits on the next couple turns, but also they let you reroll one die in your tally and you cannot reroll a locked die. So basically it'll give me a little reroll attempt to kind of make things better. 
So I now have a corporal, excellent. And then we are not moving, so we're just gonna hang out. And then for combat, I'm back down to 27. And we spent our two stars on the corporal. Okay, so let's roll. I don't really love any of this. Okay, let's go ahead and take these two because I do want to save up a little courage. I'm gonna have to keep moving up. Okay, don't want the skull really. I'll take this. And let's see if I can get, ah. Uh, okay, I didn't quite get what I wanted, but it wasn't terrible either. I should probably be choosing my re-rolls a little more strategically, but that's okay. All right, so, oh, I could re-roll one die in my final tally, by the way, so let's decide if I want to do that. So my final tally has a potential RWB, but not quite. One metal, one tool. All right, I'm gonna see if I can re-roll this to get an R a red, white, and blue here. Ah, okay, now it's still, still courage, that's okay. Okay, so now we're just gonna do our tallies. So I'm gonna get one, two, three, four soldiers just because. So I'm just kind of like in soldier limbo in this spot, which isn't terrible because I have in the 30s right now, but uh. All right, I do get two more medals. So that puts me at four medals. I get one item point, which puts me in range to buy some of those cooler seven point items, but I really wanna save up for like a flamethrower or something. And then I get one star. Now I'm going to adjust the unit marker to three. I only get one more turn here. Whew. Fortunately, I do have that corporal, so I can move to a good spot. And then we're also going to do combat, so I have to lose four guys again. So we're back down to 27. This has just been consistent. I don't like it. It's our last turn in this spot. Ooh, okay. So I'm actually going to keep this. We got a skull RWB. This is called a dead man's gift. And we are keeping those because they actually get us a sweet bonus, which I'll show you momentarily. Uh, as for the rest of this, I don't know. I'm just gonna reroll these. Okay. So I have one more reroll. I'm gonna keep the soldiers. Or do I wanna try for another RWB on tools? Cause that would be kind of cool. Items or item points are helpful. All right, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna keep these and see. That was cocked. Okay, so I got a medal. I did not get the RWB I was hoping for, but I do have a corporal, so I can reroll one die in my final tally. So let's just try one more time. Oh, I got it, yes. Okay, so um, I now have two RWBs. That's gonna be a nice little turn. So in my total, I get to ignore all the nasty skull results, yay, but I do get a dead man's gift. I get to gain 17 item points and two stars. So I went from seven item points to 24. That's very nice. And then I get two stars. And I'm actually just gonna go ahead and take my next star from the map, so that puts me at four stars. And then I have my items. So basically I got my special find, that's gonna be four soldiers. <laughs> Great. We'll just do the same thing as always. So I'm back up to 31. And then I am also gonna have these three item faces, which gives me another six item points. So I've got 30 item points. I can go shopping, y'all. You can only pick up one item per turn, but I can get some exciting stuff now. So I'm really happy about that. All right, so upkeep is over. We are now gonna do the adjust unit marker. We must move. It is required. Um, now I can rally a specialist, find an item or draw an award. So I can rally one specialist, find one item or draw one random award, but I don't have six courage and I wouldn't spend on that because I got to move. All right, so I have four specialist points. Let's shop for some specialist first and kind of see what it is we might want. All right, for rally specialist, I've decided to go with a minesweeper. There are a bunch of landmines coming up and I'd like to ignore them. So I'm going to hire this guy uh, for three stars. So he's going to go here. I have one star left now. So I've adjusted that. Um, I don't want to pay for an award. I might want an item though. I had 30 item points, not 20. So this one, I got to watch the numbers in here because it is loose. Okay, let's see if there's any items I want. The other question is, do I get a cheap item now? 
and then a more expensive one later, or just go for that Bangalore torpedo. All right, I think what I'm gonna get this time is the grenade. I can prevent machine gun fire in my bunker or sector for one turn uh, because machine gun fire can be horrible. I'm gonna deal with it this time because I have a lot of soldiers, but I might not later. So I'm gonna, I like having the grenade. So I'm gonna buy that for 10 this time. However, you can get things like a walkie talkie for two guys. And eh, I'm doing okay enough on guys right now. But what I'm really saving up for is this flamethrower because it reduces the defense of the bunker to 10 instead of 20, which means that it'd be a lot easier to survive combat up there in that bunker. So I'm not gonna buy it yet. I got my eye on this baby. But for now, I'm gonna take 10 points down. I have exactly enough to buy that flamethrower later. Hopefully I still get to, and I have a grenade. So I'm just gonna hold on to that in case I need to mitigate some machine gun fire on coming turn. All right, so now we have finished phase four. We've done our rallying and our item shopping. Now I have to move. I'm on the red arrow of death. I must move. Um, so I'm actually gonna come here. The reason I picked up the corporal is see how this symbol matches this one right here on the board. He is a requirement. I must have the depicted specialist to enter this sector. So rather than rush up and lose a bunch of guys, I'm gonna come here and start in this spot. So this part of the beach is a good place to be. I'm gonna lose two courage to have moved there because the cost was right here. Um, I can move laterally for free, but why would I do that? Um, I got the minesweeper so that I could ignore these landmines moving up. So basically I'm hoping I can have another couple good turns here and then sort of just bum rush my way up. We'll see. So now that I've come here, we must suffer combat. So I will lose three guys to start. So I'll put me at 28 and then I have to roll the machine gun die. So basically what happens is I have to roll this six sided die and I'll lose additional soldiers for the roll. So pray for us. Five, that was terrible. Okay, so I lost five extra guys. So that puts us back down to 23. That's rough, especially because we know that I'm gonna lose 20 just coming up here in addition to whatever else happens including machine gun fire. So good thing I got that grenade in case we end up in a tight spot, but things only get harder from here. Hopefully I have a very productive set of rolls on this turn. All right, so let's go ahead and do a roll for phase one. Okay, I'm not gonna keep these skulls and hope for an RWB. I have to lock two. I'm gonna lock this one. I'm gonna lock a metal because I get anxious about running out of metals. I need two more to move up and then three and then four and I'm not getting a lot of them. So ugh, I'll hold on to those metals. Second roll. Okay, actually I got a metal RWB. Who would have thought? So I'll take that this time and I'll see. I don't think I wanna move for this battle cry but it might be interesting. And then let's roll again. All right, so I got a star and two soldiers. So this was not great on soldiers, especially since I'm losing a little bit. Whew, I could reroll one die in my final tally, but there's no reason to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and just do our, our um, upkeep. So here I, uh, I have a metal RWB battle cry. So for the battle cry, I will gain two stars or if I move this turn, I can ignore all requirements of the new sector. And if I'm advancing, I don't have to spend any courage to enter. Landmines do still apply, but that's what a minesweeper's for. And then combat occurs normally once I've moved. So um, basically I would be able to move for free. I'm not ready to do that right now though. I wanna try to get some more soldiers going up because like losing 10 a turn, that's a disaster. And I would rather not. So let's give ourselves the stars though, because getting more specialists is good. I'm at three stars. So with the battle cry, I've gotten the two stars. It puts me in a total of three. Then I have three more guys. That's not great, but you know, 26. Okay, we'll, we'll work with it. I got one more star off just my dice. So that's good because I have four specialist points to spend. And I got three courage just from die faces. So I have enough to advance once and almost twice. So that's also good. All right, so it wasn't the best turn ever, but we got some stuff out of it. Uh, now we're gonna adjust our unit markers, so we're at two. So we're gonna have to move sooner than we like every single time. All right, now we're in phase four. Uh, I don't necessarily wanna get an item just yet. I'm hoping to get one in here and then pop in there with a flamethrower, but we'll see how, how, we'll see the turns our life takes. But I do wanna see about getting a specialist. 
So I have four stars to spend. Let's see if there's somebody fancy. Or actually, you know what? I'm just not that fancy. See that medic lose one less soldier per phase? That seems like a smart plan to me. So I'm gonna spend my stars on rallying this medic. Join us, bro. All right. So we got a sharpshooter, our corporal, our minesweeper, our medic. By the way, in an emergency, these dudes also count as soldiers. So if I have to lose guys into my specialist pile, I can. I would prefer not to. So my resource card says I have 26 soldiers, but actually I have 30 for these guys. Okay, so move, not doing it. Combat, I'm losing three, plus whatever machine gun roll I get. Please let it be low this time, good lord. All right, two, I will take it. Um, that puts me at 21. Time to roll some more. I need some, I need some manpower here. Come on, soldiers. All right, so I just rolled another Courage RWV. That's cool. But do I want to keep it? I want some dudes. Okay, I'm going to keep it though because I do want all these medals. I'm just solidifying my medal situation. And then I'm actually going to keep these too. I'm just, this is a good first roll. I could just, I only have to lock two of them. I'm going to see if I can roll two soldiers as a result in the next couple rolls. Okay, not that one. Not that time. I'm going to use my corporal to reroll one more time. Come on. Yes. All right, so that worked out great. We got two RWBs. Let's party. All right, so I have my courage ones, my battle cry. So I'm definitely, I can gain two stars or I can just move. Uh, oh, by the way, I should have given myself an item point last turn for this and I'll get another one in this upkeep. So do I want two stars or do I want to move? I don't really want to move. I'm going to take these two stars try to bulk out for one more turn before things get really gnarly. So I got my two stars and I get three courage for these medals, which is great because it's putting me in a good spot in terms of being able to get all the way up to this bunker. So those I've dealt with. This one, I get uh, fresh troops gain five soldiers. So it puts me at 26 plus the six off the die faces. So I'm back up to 32. So I've got 32 soldiers and then one tool point, item point. So uh, that's not bad. Now we're gonna adjust the unit marker so I can spend one more turn here. Um, I can rally a specialist, but I've only got two stars. I don't really want to, I'll wait. And I don't want an item yet because I'm hopefully gonna be able to uh, get all the way up here and then buy my fancy pants torpedo flamethrower. Flamethrower, that's what I want. All right, we're, we're not moving. We do have to do combat. So I'll lose three guys to put me at 29. And then I have to roll for machine gun fire. All right, only one this time. Thank God. All right, so we're at 28 soldiers. So this, things are going to get messy in these upcoming turns because we're going to have to move. So let's hope for a very nice roll because combat's going to be ugly. Okay. So I did get an RWB off of the stars. Let's see what that gets you. So I can either basically get some rerolls or I can gain two courage, which I think I'm just gonna take actually. So I'm gonna take this RWB. Should I got like a chaplain, dang. That's roll number two. I'll keep this guy. Oh great, so I got a skull and then, but I could ignore it because of the uh, sharpshooter. So this wasn't actually the best roll, but that's fine. Okay, so I got, so I got three stars off of that. And then for the RWB, I'm actually gonna take the two courage. That puts me at nine courage, which is good because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I've now earned enough courage to plot my entire movement up to the bunker. And that is something that I really wanted. So good. Um, then I only just get one soldier, 29. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. And then I get one item point. So I'm at 23 item points. That's cool, I guess. Okay. So did that. We're adjusting our marker. Uh, do I want to rally a specialist? I got five points. I could rally somebody fancy. Let's have a look. All right, I'm finally gonna spend these four points on somebody I really like. We're gonna get the Lieutenant. So you'll note solo play down here on the bottom. This is a special solo play Lieutenant. So when you rally him, you roll six RWB dice. So basically enough for one other player or just the equivalent of what you have. 
and then you put them on the card. On each phase one, I can swap one die from my final tally with one from this card. Uh, but then I have to keep discarding down. So I can't just do that forever. Um, but basically I'm creating a dice pool that lets me swap. So I'm going to do that. All right, so now I've got this Lieutenant and he needs some dice. I know there's no logic to this, but I'm keeping the ones I've been rolling the whole time as mine and then rolling his. Okay, so he's got a couple of medals, a dude, two dudes, a star, and ew, a skull. I don't think we want that, but you know. So now basically if I really need an RWB, for example, I can grab a die from here and swap out with what I've got. So this wasn't a great Lieutenant roll, but we'll do something with it for sure. No doubt, it always happens. All right, so I've rallied a specialist. I need to pay for him. That puts me down to one star. And then now we must move. So the question is, where do we want to move? We have two choices. Uh, and let's look at the consequences of each choice so that you can get a sense of the kinds of choices this game will have you make. So we can go here or here. We could move laterally, but I'm, I'm not interested in doing that. Uh, so we can either go to this one and lose 10 guys and have a machine gun fire, or we can go to this one and lose 10 guys and have a machine gun fire. So the decision is gonna be made in our little consequences here. So let's think about what these die symbols mean and what I'm losing here. All right, so basically what's gonna happen is I can either come here and I only roll five dice, which is a bit of a loss, or I can come here, lose a specialist, but no dice are locked in this area. So I don't have to lock two at the, at, after my first roll. I really need to roll and try to get more guys. I think the other thing to think about is that um, I'm also gonna have to choose kind of long run, which of these I wanna go into. So in this one, this means that I can't find items here. So I cannot buy an item in this one before going into the um, bunker. So if I choose this direction, I need to buy any items I'm gonna buy before I keep rolling on. Then we've got this one where, um, you know, if I move on up to here, I'm gonna lose another specialist, but I will get some extra soldiers, which would be cool because they, um, I basically will roll a die and pick up up to six stragglers. So that's nice, I can gain something. The other thing I'm thinking about is do I just kind of want to bum rush up into the bunker depending on how I do soldier wise? Because I don't want to hang out here and get shredded and then hang out here and get shredded and then try to go in here and survive. So I think what I might do is with the full intention of moving my butt up further, I'm gonna go here and only roll five dice. I get to ignore these landmines because I have a minesweeper. So I came in here. Unfortunately, that meant that I immediately lose 10 guys, but there was nothing I could do to avoid that one, sadly. And then I do get a machine gun fire. Oh, please let it be low. All right, three. It's not great. I'm at 16 soldiers, so I cannot get where I need to go with 16 soldiers, even though I technically have 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 because I'm just gonna lose so many. So I really, really, really need to be rolling for soldiers right now. I also need to pay courage for my move, so that puts me down to seven, but I was prepared for that, so we're good. All right, so let's see how this goes. I'm only, I'm only allowed to roll five dice. I'm gonna leave both of the blues in the pool because I can trade red and white for guys and try to get some sort of combo. Let's leave, let's leave a white one out. Okay. Let's see what this gets me here. Okay, not bad. Um, let's go ahead and just keep all the guys. Okay. And then, whoop, I get one more roll. More guys and this metal. So what I'm gonna do with the metal is I'm actually gonna trade it for this. So now I have a an RWB of soldiers. So this actually worked out great. This turn could not have really gone too much better. So even with five dice, we got something done. All right, so we have um, plus five soldiers for this bin, for this uh, RWB bonus. So 21 plus six, 27, plus just three more, 30. Okay, we're up to 30 soldiers. That is right about where I wanna be. So 
Okay, we're gonna adjust the unit marker. We could stay here, but I don't actually want to. Um, so the upkeep is done. We've adjusted the unit marker. I can't really rally a specialist. I could buy an item. I am gonna buy an item. I am gonna buy an item. I'm gonna go ahead and buy my desired flamethrower for 20. So now I only have three item points, but it was worth it because having a flamethrower makes me feel cool. All right, so I've got a flamethrower. It's here, I'm just gonna put it. It's off to the side for now. I'll pull it back up when it's time to use it, hopefully up here in this bunker. And I get my six die back. Excellent. So basically this dow disappears from the game. Um, when you use stuff on the Lieutenant, it doesn't just hang out forever. So I did the swap, the die is gone. All right, so I found my item. Now I'm gonna decide if I wanna move. I actually do wanna move. So we are gonna spend three courage. We're right on a four. Um, we are going to hop up in here. This isn't great because I do have to lose a specialist and that sucks. But uh, we did get to ignore landmines, so that was cool. And now that he's served his purpose, um, we're gonna dump the minesweeper because I'm a bad person. <laughs> Thank you for your service, sir. Um, so, oh, and I haven't even been using my medic. I'm a fool. I should have been losing one less soldier per phase. Oh, I'm an idiot. So one thing I will tell you about this game, something I suck at with it is remembering all the different tallies, especially while talking and playing. Um, so that's something that you want to make sure that you're paying attention to because that was foolish of me. I will just deal with what I've lost because I'm an idiot. But um, yeah, watch out for that. Learn from me. Learn from, uh, learn from my mistakes. All right, so we've moved up and we lost our specialist and now we're gonna do combat. So I'm gonna lose 10 soldiers just straight up. So back down to 20. Yikes. We'll roll the machine gun. So that was four, also yikes. So that puts me at 16. I need to get some guys mustered up if we're gonna move up in here. So basically my goal is to get high enough where I can run into the bunker and just handle this. Uh, but I do get to pick up some stragglers. So I'm gonna roll a D6 and I picked up three soldiers back. So we're up to 19, 19, not bad. Okay, so we've done our combat. We've resolved all of our stuff coming up in here. Okay. Are we going to get our butts up here into this bunker? Yes, yes we are. Come hell or high water, we're doing this. All right, so hell definitely came, got some skulls. Uh, I'm gonna keep these two soldiers and let's roll a couple more times. All right, um, I don't really need any of this. Okay, soldier, soldier, courage. I did get an RWB on soldiers and I'm just gonna ignore the skull because I can. Got my sharpshooter. Thanks, buddy. Okay, so um, with these three, I get to add four soldiers to my unit. So 23. Then I get to add four soldiers to a unit of my choice, and I choose me. 27. Then I get three more, just four more, for just die faces. So we're at 31. Excellent, and then we do get another medal, but we're not gonna need it. Okay, so adjust the unit marker, but we're not hanging out here. Why would I sit here and hang out here when I can go in there? I mean, um, so rally specialist, find an item, draw an award. Um, I don't need to do any of that. Uh, phase five, move. We are moving, we are moving, we are moving, we are moving. So um, we're gonna go down to one courage, because it takes four to move up into this bunker. We are doing this. So we moved and now we're gonna do combat. And this is where my items kind of come into play here. So I have a grenade and I have a flamethrower. So there are no limits to how many items I can use in a turn. So I've just been holding on to this stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and play my grenade first to prevent machine gun fire in my sector or bunker for one turn. It must be played before the machine gun fires rolled. That is now we're going into combat. So I don't have to roll for the machine gun fire. And then flamethrower, subtract 10 from the defense of your bunker. So basically this went from 20 to 10 in the bunker. So I will lose 10 men in combat. That will leave me with 21 
in the bunker. I definitely survived this bunker combat. And that means that we won this scenario. So this is the most introductory scenario. It will become easier to win it once you kind of know what you're doing, how to use the dice, how to find specials and items, but it's still a fun little scenario and it's a great one to practice on. So this is where I do recommend that you start. The maps get a lot harder from here. So I hope that you've enjoyed this starting journey to D-Day Dice and that you undertake that journey yourself because this is a fun one. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and happy gaming, everybody.